What's good fellow spirit vehicles? How are you doing? It's Clara, this is Spirit Vehicle. And it's time to talk about death. I remember like the moment when I realised I was going to die one day as a kid. I just sort of like lay there like in my bed like, I don't know, age 10 or something. I think it was, actually it was, it was after my grand grand had died, my grandmother. And suddenly it just hit me that, you know, she was gone and she wasn't coming back. And one day I'd be gone and I wouldn't be coming back. And like the sort of like mortal train of terror just hits you and you're like, what? Like, I mean, it's always inconceivable because we have no idea what's going to happen, but it's going to happen. It's the thing that we all have in common, you know, it, it's something we're all going to face one day. I have got an idea, though, and I, I've, I've gained this idea since uh, pursuing, like, dream yoga and, like, you know, practicing lucid dreaming. Building a consciousness in my sleep world. I stumbled across the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Um, I watched a film called Enter the Void, which you guys should watch if you haven't, it's a mindfuck. Um, and the thing that seems to be pretty consistent in a lot of these um, accounts of you know, the, the after-death state is this. It's almost like having an out-of-body, I, I say it's almost like it's literally having an out-of-body experience. You've left your body for the last time and you are purely a consciousness and the Tibetan Book of the Dead says that you, we go through something called the Bardo state, blah, blah, blah. Either way, it stresses the importance um, for us to spend our, you know, I mean, we spend like a third of our lives asleep. Like, how crazy is that if you spend it unconscious? But what this does is it expresses the importance, and it stresses the importance of of exercising dream yoga and building this consciousness in your sleep so that when you die that experience that you're faced with which if is anything like the fucking Tibetan say it is sounds hectic and crazy and horrendous um, you at least are able to separate you know reality from Maya illusion you know and know what to do and how to get through it because it just sounds ridiculous anyway um, this guy Ramin um, has made this comic after you die, which is just brilliant, and I really loved it. So I'll post, yeah, as I said, I'll post pictures of what it is here. But um, otherwise, I'll just read to you what they are, and we can have a little read together, which is quite cute. Uh. Um, okay, so the introduction, he says, the good news, if you're reading this, then you are alive, congratulations. The bad news, this is only temporary, you are going to die. It could be today, it could be in a hundred years. That part will be a surprise. Don't feel bad about it though, because everyone dies. I don't claim to know what happens after you die. The following illustrations are just models that I like to entertain. So, <clears throat> number one. Now this is, this is one that I probably would have agreed with, a f yeah, a few years ago, which is oblivion, absolute nothingness. Which is just, you know, you die and then that's the end of your consciousness. It's just an eternity of nothingness. It's a very atheistic way to look at it, but um, I understand why I've been a thinker like that. You know, if you don't have any experience on the astral planes, if you don't have any sort of out-of-body ventures to speak of, you know, experience-wise, then you're going to think that it would just be like sleep. So oblivion, absolute nothingness. This is the safest, most rational answer. Take that with a pinch of salt. He's probably um, from America or England. <laughs> um, as far as we know, consciousness is nothing more than neural impulses in your brain. That's a very scientism-y thing to say. But that is definitely not what we are. <laughs> um, no more oxygen being delivered to the brain equals no more you. No body, no thoughts, no feelings. But if that's the case, then, you know, it, it, it sparks that whole YOLO attitude, which you only live once, do you? Or is there such thing as reincarnation? Either way, that whole YOLO thing introduces this attitude of carelessness and sort of like, 
um, just not really giving a fuck because you don't think you're going to have any consequences or anything. I, I really believe in doing exactly what you want. Um, and I think that it's outrageous that we live in a culture where people can tell us what to do with our lives. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy. We're treated like infants, you know? But either way, um, <laughs> won't go on that particular round right now. Okay, so the next one. Heaven. Infinite bliss for an infinite amount of time. Seems odd that your actions during a few short years on Earth would decide your fate for an eternity, but if I end up here, I won't complain. I mean, I've always felt, and I remember like, so I have a family member that's a Jehovah's Witness, and when I was a kid, I used to go there like, every now and then. And I remember I'd be sat there and I'd be thinking like, like, all these people are very, very well behaved, very, very, uh, you know, straight and narrow and respectable. And I'm the opposite. I've always just been like a, a child tyrant, like, <laughs> just ask my mum, bless her. Um, yeah, I've just always been on my own fucking mission and didn't like listening to what anybody else had to say about what I should be doing, whatever. Um, and so then I always, <laughs> oh God, is this really rude of me? Um, I always thought, well, if all of these people that like don't do anything that is fun, don't even you know swear and I'm there like effing and blinding all the fucking time, if they're going to heaven. I don't want to be there. And I thought. <laughs> now, obviously, I think heaven is something which we have a choice to be in whilst we're alive. Anyway. Hell, infinite suffering for an infinite amount of time. Learn your lesson. Too bad you're here forever. Um. Okay, so this also reminds me of when I was like. 17, um, I'd, <laughs> I'd been like raving, um, and you know what comes hand in hand with raving, and you tend to sometimes have these epiphanies where you're like, you know, on some <laughs> MDMA fueled cloud of utter bliss and joy and connectedness with all of your friends with their swinging jaws and like, remember that, that look. <laughs> In those moments, um, I would have these like flashes of just like, you know, for the first time in my life, sort of spiritual insight. And I remember having one when I, I, I maybe I was 19, um, and it was that hell and what heaven is, um, is as you're dying, it's the moment that you look back on your life, whether you are proud of yourself and whether you are happy with what you did in your life or not. I thought heaven would be that feeling of being happy and proud and all that stuff, and hell would be full of regret and all that kind of thing. But yeah, interesting. Anyway, next one. Purgatory. Just you and a giant room of nothingness. At least in oblivion, there is no you to experience boredom. In purgatory, there is a you. A very, very bored you. And the guy says, at least I'm not on fire. I mean, that sounds really shit. Okay. Next one. Reincarnation. Return to Earth as another person, animal, or thing. This cycle of rebirth continues forever. Now, okay, this is probably the one that I subscribe to the most. I did a weird, like, past life regression hypnosis thing. Had some uh, pretty stunning results in terms of, like, um, I felt like I understood the link to why I have these like crazy headaches that I get called cluster headaches. I believe if it is connected to a past life that it was connected to the way that I died. Um, which is mad. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably the one that I would subscribe to the most. Um, although I'm not sure. How do I know? Uh, okay, ghost. You no longer have a body, but are still an awareness floating around Earth. You spend most of your time hanging out in old mansions, scaring white folk. Ha! <laughs> ah, lol. Okay, so ghosts. Again, this is also something which I think is probably the case. Um, not in the idea that this guy is suggesting, but I think there are bodiless souls that are still around us. 
um, that were too anchored to this material earth plane to be able to move on in the way that was necessary, whatever, whatever. You know, still, they still have a lot of their uh, earthly desires, you know, whatever it was that they were too fond of in, in this life, they weren't able to give up. So they instead have this like bodiless existence trying to get this thing that they want and were never able to get enough of before they died. And I think that is when someone says like that a person that has like a drinking problem or whatever, it's almost like they've got like a demon inside them or when they, you know, when they drink this demon comes out or you know when someone has a really bad drug addiction. I've seen this with a couple of my friends who back in the day had quite bad drug addictions. It was like they, they would be this, it'd be like there was something that was like working through them almost and the person that I knew would disappear and this like desperate sort of like, eh, give me ketamine or whatever would come through and be like fuck i think when that happens i think that is these disincarnate existences fulfilling their desires through the person and this is how a person can lose himself into an addiction and you know because the more they give into that addiction the more they strengthen this bond that this um bodiless entity has over them anyway tangent Okay, uh, resonate, the last thing that you feel resonates through the cosmos as you become that feeling eternally. So this is kind of like my little epiphany when I was 19, kind of like what I was saying. Uh, wake up, it was all a dream, you wake up in a brand new reality, your last life felt so real but memory of it quickly dissolves. Okay, so this. Don't you think that sort of strikes a familiar weird like memory chord somewhere deep in your subconscious? Like, <laughs> that, that made me sort of get a weird deja vu that. And I think that is because often when I wake up from a dream, I'll be like stunned at how invested I was in that dream's reality. And I'll be like, like when I'm in the dream, I'm like all about whatever's going on in that dream. However ridiculous or insignificant what I'm doing is, that's, that was reality. I mean, until I started introducing lucidity and you know trying to bring my waking consciousness into my sleep world. Yeah, it was just so strong. Uh, and I did think, what if we die and we wake up and we're like, oh, that was a weird dream. You know what I mean? I feel like, I feel like I'm getting slight glimpses of that being the case, but I don't know. Repeat, same life again with no memory of your last one. The universe expands and contracts. As it begins to expand again, all of the same events, including your thoughts, experiences, and decisions, repeat. Fuck, you don't remember that all of this has happened before, although sometimes deja vu makes you wonder. Oh my god, I've had the most stunning deja vu recently. Isn't deja vu the weirdest thing? It gives you like a sense of like that timeless quality because it's like you know that you've done this before and it feels recent but it can't have been recent. It's such a weird thing because you experience that no time place. Mmm. Mmm. I wonder. New game. Same life repeats, only this time you remember everything. Similar to the rules in Groundhog Day. Chrono Trigger Bastion and Fez. I've no idea what that fucking means. Um, after exhausting your pursuit of base desires, you realise that true bliss in life comes from living in the present moment and serving others. Oh, couldn't agree more. Wait, does that mean that's what I'm doing? No, because I don't remember everything. God, that'd be awful. Simulation. Your whole life was part of a simulation that you designed. Even the concept of designing something or the concept of concepts was something you created. There is no real world, there is only you. That sounds shit and lonely. Live on in your child's mind. Your awareness shifts into that of your child's mind. You don't control any of your child's decisions, nor do they know that you're in there. That's terrifying. Um, you just witness their life as though it were a movie. After they die, you both move on to their child's mind, and so on and so on. Now, I think this one has, I think he's on something there. Because I wonder if this is how the concept of ancestors live. I do almost feel like when we have a child, we split ourselves into 
half with you know the mother or father, depending on whether you're a mum or dad. Um, and you create this new person that's like a fusion of you and the other person. Because like I think about it sometimes, I'm so much like my mum and so much like my dad. And my dad wasn't around enough for me to have really inherited his behaviour. But I am so much like him, you know, that I think. I mean, don't get me started on the whole scientism thing anyway, but I definitely think science has removed the spiritual aspect of looking at, you know, things that we inherit and our, um, what, what our inherited traits actually suggest. Mm. Surprise party. Everyone was in on it. You agreed to be love from everyone on earth. What now? Now you switch roles and begin planning a new party, go. This reminds me of an Alan Watts video I saw where it was like, okay, let's just imagine that we are all God incarnate and it is, our lives exist so that God can experience himself. That would mean God would know that he was God whilst he was experiencing the universe through these lives that he lives through us. And what fun would that be? So what if, God got bored of just, you know, playing these lives over and over again. And so to make it real, to really, you know, get deep in the game, he took away the part where we remember who and what we are. And he made us just believe that we were, I mean, I mean, nothing, just, he just left us to not have a fucking clue who we are, why we're here, blah, blah, blah. Interesting that, eh? That made me fucking think. I mean, that kept me awake for weeks, that one. <laughs> I was like, am I God? <laughs> if you say that in the West, if you say to somebody, wait, I think I might be God, it's like, slam, you're in a mental institution or you're like, outcasters are crazy. Whereas if you say that in somewhere like India, like, I think I've just realized I'm God. They're like, finally, at last you remembered. <laughs> huh? The universe is not only stranger than we suppose, it's stranger than we can suppose. Terence McKenna my boy. Um, indescribable state where no physical laws can be recognised. Even if you were just there, you'd be unable to articulate what you saw. I feel like that sounds like DMT. Okay, you never die. You never died before. You're not dead now. Perhaps you never will die. Technology is growing at an increasingly rapid rate. Your consciousness gets uploaded into the cloud and you live on as a god in the black hole in the centre of our galaxy. Had you been born earlier, you would have known oblivion, but now you never will. That sounds transhuman, agenda-esque, and I hate it. Okay, paradox. All of the previously mentioned models are simultaneously true and untrue. You are already dead. You are alive eternally. The past and the future don't exist and never did. There is only now. That last one, though. That last one. Anyway, shout out to Ramin, shout out to you guys, and um, yeah. I was thinking about doing like a reaction video to some crazy conspiracies that I uh, have been sent to check out. How would you guys feel about that? Let me know. Peace, love, and uh, prosper. Prosper. Peace, love, and prosper. That's terrible, I'm not going to start saying that. Um... So third line message for this episode, due to the slightly um, macabre subject matter, I'll sa I will say what I've said in a previous video was, stop. Do you hear that? Do you see that? Do you feel that? That's your life. And it's happening. Isn't it fabulous? Fuck one day.